record right now. Okay, so hi everybody. My name is Jessica Lopez and I am your pre-calculus instructor. Some of the names look familiar, but it's been so long since I've seen a student that <laughs> I don't even remember faces to the names. So, um, if you have seen me or had me for a class before, this is awesome. Um, I can't wait to see you guys face to face when we go back to campus. Um, because of all the COVID surges, they did um, mandate that all of the face to face classes start off remote for the first two weeks. Um, and then they're going to revisit the uh, situation and decide whether or not to expand, um, extend the remote time or to go ahead and allow us to come back on campus. Now I am here on campus, you can see I'm in my office, um, but the students have not come back and most of the faculty are not here. I think it's just myself and one other faculty who opted and chose to get the weekly um, COVID screenings and which is basically the test. Um, and I have to get um, my temperature checked and all that good stuff as I come into the building. Once I'm in my office and I close the door, I'm okay, I can be mask free. Um, when we see each other in the class, we will be wearing masks. So um, you won't get to see my face, <laughs> at least not all of it, uh, whenever we do go back into the classroom. Um, so it's kind of okay that we're here on Zoom, at least you get to see um, my whole face, you know what I look like. Um, and I hope to, to visit with you guys and see you guys soon. Um, because we're starting, remote. I do have orientation um, and I've always in all my classes I do orientation in two ways. Um, there's the online orientation which has a lot of things that they got to go through but then I also do sort of the same thing for my face-to-face -face classes. Um, I just kind of walk you through it during that first class period and then after that you guys will um, go through the orientation on your own. Okay, It is all due today now, I do want to let you know that there has been some issues, so I've tried to do what I can to kind of work around that issue, and I'll explain more when we, when we get there, okay? Um, you guys are supposed to be here till 2.50, and that might sound like a long time, but there is so much information to share with you this first day. So because of that, I don't anticipate that I'm going to finish too, too early than that 2.50 mark. I did do an orientation yesterday with the college algebra class and it lasted an hour and 45 minutes. So just to give you a heads up, um, we're not gonna do any um, math, quote unquote math, right? <laughs> Today, not yet. We will um, hit the ground running on Thursday with the math. So we will cover our first section math related um, on Thursday, okay? So I'm gonna share my screen with you guys so that you can see how to get in the class from here on. We don't want to share that information with anybody. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna have to block that out. Okay. So when you log into, where is it? Um, when you log into ACES, you see something that kind of looks like this, right? Um, and so when you see all of this, you're gonna to wanna to click on the Canvas icon all the way to the right. And then once you've hit that canvas icon, it's gonna take you to your dashboard. And so you'll see all your math classes in there. Um, I teach nothing but math, so that's all you see on my screen. But for you, if you have like history or English or something, it's gonna pop up here, okay? And you wanna find our class. I think our class has this um, pretty serious logo here, pre-calculus and trigonometry. You can see my algebra logos are a little bit more playful. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and click on that class to let this in. Now, there are some people that already started um, working on getting this orientation done, and that's great. You guys got a head start. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and click here where it says click here to begin. However, if I click on modules on the left at the top, it will take me to the same place, okay? So regardless of which one you click, it's going to take you to the modules page. This modules page 
is where you'll be in Canvas, okay? This is where everything for the whole course is going to sit. Um, even when we go remote, when we go remote, the only difference really between the face-to-face -face and the remote is one, we're not physically in the same room, right? Um, we're doing this thing all on Zoom, but we're still live. You can still um, come off of mute and ask questions whenever you want. You can totally interrupt me and that's okay. Um, I encourage questions. So if you ever, you know, something comes up in your brain and you just wanna ask, please ask, okay? It's better to ask it right away when you have the thought than to forget, right? Um, so at any point today and any day in the future, if I'm talking <laughs> and you have a question, just come off of mute, just say, excuse me. And I'll hear that, excuse me. And then I'll stop talking and then allow you um, to ask whatever it is that you need to ask, and then we'll continue from there, okay? It's the same as if we were in a class. If you got a question, you raise your hand, you know, same thing, okay? Except here, I really need you to come off mute and say, excuse me, because if you do the little hand raising icon in Zoom, not that everyone knows how to do that, but if you knew how and you did it, chances are I'm not going to see it, okay? Uh, especially when I'm sharing my screen, or when I'm working on my paper, because I'm not necessarily looking at the um, the little video icons of everybody, okay? So you, I definitely rely on you to come off of mute if you have questions, okay? Um, this is where all of the orientation module is all in here. So this is all bits of information. It well, I do have a question. Sure, go ahead. Um, this is going straight from college out to pre-cal right yes if you took college algebra then this is the next class pre-cal and so okay. you want to take this class if you're trying to get to calculus mm -hmm. or if this is like one of the requirements on your degree plan it's a requirement for engineering it's just i have all my notes and stuff from my other class so i'm going to relook at those i couldn't look at it during the test so um, right. i'll keep an eye on it sure okay um so when we go face to face, like when we actually are able to go face to face, we will do the tests face to face. So, you know, administer a test like you normally get administered. You do it during that class time and then you turn it in at the end of class, right? Um, if for some reason we get to week five and we're still not in the classroom, um, I have made it available so that you can take that first test online. Okay, um, and you would do it online even if we were in a face-to-face -face class. I'm not gonna give you paper. Um, you're gonna do it on the computer, except I'm gonna be in the room to monitor everything that's going on, okay? Um, so either way, your tests are going to be on the computer. It's just a matter of whether we're going to be using the computers on campus in the classroom where I can watch you, or we're gonna have to do it online and then in that case, we have to have something called Respondus Monitor, where it records you, um, and you have to have Lockdown Browser, where it closes all the other windows and doesn't allow you to open up other windows while you're taking the test, okay? It's, you know, of course, it's all for security purposes so that no one's cheating or using things that they're not supposed to be using while testing, okay? Um, so I do have those things in the orientation module just in case. So I put them in there so you can try to, you know, kind of get a head start on it just in case we do have to um, do our first test online. Okay. But for the most part, this orientation looks really, really long. It does. It's a little <laughs> overwhelming when you see it at the beginning. However, essentially what it is, is it's the course syllabus, but broken up into a bunch of different pieces. Because if you start reading that syllabus, you're gonna get probably 10% of the way and then lose interest. And it's just a lot of information, okay? So essentially what they had us do in these orientations is basically break everything up into pieces and then you can see it all um, separated instead of all together. But you, if you notice, if you go to the syllabus and it's also here in this um, assignment down here, when you go to the syllabus, you're going to see a lot of the stuff repeated, okay? And it's that was intentional, 
that was on purpose, okay? So I'm gonna kind of walk you through it. And before I do that, I wanted to mention there's the problem, okay? So the problem is, is that we are using a software or a website from a publisher called Cengage, okay? So Cengage is like the company from which we're gonna get all of our math materials from, okay? So the book, you know, access to the homework online, all that stuff is with this um, company called Cengage. And the website that you're gonna go to for your homework is called WebAssign. Now, if you try to click on one of the WebAssign assignments, for right now, this is the only WebAssign assignment that you're gonna have access to, um, which is the getting started with WebAssign. And you won't have access to it until you finish this entire orientation, okay? Um, and I'm gonna have to change this date because there's issues with this assignment. The problem is, is that if you click on this assignment right now, like pretend you were able to, it would ask you to pay for access to WebAssign. And you guys should not be paying for anything because when you paid your tuition, there was an instructional materials fee tagged on to your tuition for this class. So what that did was that basically paid the college for your materials, your book, your homework, all of that good stuff. Um, and then that way we can give everything to you on day one, okay? Problem is, is that there's a problem with it, okay? And the, the package, I guess, that we chose to go with is something called Cengage Unlimited. And it's a subscription. So you guys are gonna have a two year subscription to this Cengage Unlimited. What that means is that aside from our book and our web assign um, homework, if your other classes have Cengage books, you know, books where the Cengage is the publisher, um, you could also get those books for free inside that website, inside that Cengage Unlimited website. So you want to activate your subscription before trying to click on one of the assignments, okay? Um, and in order for you to activate it, what you're gonna do is you're going to click on this link. Now, when I click it, it's not gonna take me through the whole process, okay? So I'm gonna talk out what happens and then I'll, I'll click it so you can see what you've gotta do after that, okay? So when you click this, it's going to take you to a sign-in. You guys should not, I don't think anybody has um, a Cengage Unlimited subscription already. If you do already have a Cengage Unlimited subscription, then log in to Cengage like you normally do. However, if you've never had a Cengage Unlimited subscription, you don't even know what Cengage Unlimited is, <laughs> then when you click that, you need to go to the bottom of the page and click where it says create an account, okay? Once you create your account, all it's gonna ask you for is your email, your first name, your last name, and I think your birth date for some reason. Um, and that's it, that's all it's gonna ask you for, okay? Then when you click continue or done, it's gonna ask you to log in, but you can't log in because you don't have a password yet. Okay, so when you get to that screen for the second time that says login, you're gonna have to go back to your email, the same email address that you typed in the boxes, go to that email address and there should be a welcome email from Cengage, okay? You're gonna click where it says activate your Cengage Unlimited subscription. And when you click that activate button, that's when it's going to ask you to type in your password, type retype in your password to make sure you've got the correct one in there and then enter it. Once you enter it, it'll take you back to the login screen for a third time. And at that point you should be able to log in, okay? So remember, you click it once, it goes to the login, click create account. You enter your email and all your info, it's gonna take you back to a login but you're gonna exit out of that and go check your email. Go to the welcome email, click activate, and then it's gonna ask you to put in your password. When you hit uh, continue, 
It's going to take you to the login screen for a third time. And at that point, you should be able to type in the email and you should be able to type in your password. Once you have done all of that, <laughs> as soon as you are able to log in with your email address and your new password, um, it is going to take you through this sequence. I'm going to show you right now. Let me go back to modules because my link is not working. So I think I might have to edit this because I had no idea that it was emailing people. Okay. So you first have to go in there, um, click on the new window, you create the account, or you sign in if you have a current existing Cengage Unlimited account. Okay. I'm going to have to edit these steps because it doesn't talk in here about how you're going to have to go to your email, click the activate, and then set up your password. And then finally you can log in. Okay. So I didn't know that until just now. I walked through it with another student and I saw a whole bunch of pages that I didn't see as an instructor. Okay. So that's the only reason I know now how it will look on your end. Okay. So I'll edit this to mention everything that I just said. Okay. Um, but once you're done with that and you actually are able to successfully log in, you're gonna see a pop-up window and it's just gonna say like Cengage and it's gonna say something about a textbook. Just X out of that pop-up. Then you're gonna see another pop-up that has something to do with the tour. Just X out of that one as well. Um, you don't need a tour. We're not gonna use this website. This website is actually what's called MindTap and we don't use MindTap. The only reason we did this is so that you could activate that subscription, okay? Um, so when you do click on that link, after you sign in, you're going to see this page here that I have, my first image, and you're going to click where it says Cengage Unlimited Assignment. Notice how it's in blue? That's because it's clickable. So you'll click that, and it'll take you to this page here, and then you'll click on those same words again, okay? When you do that, it's going to ask you one simple question. It's going to say, did you activate your Cengage Unlimited subscription? If you're seeing these pages, then you have activated your Cengage subscription, okay? So the answer is going to be yes, don't say no, okay? Hit save and continue. After you hit save and continue, you're gonna hit I'm done, grade this assignment. And then a pop-up window is gonna pop up and you'll just click yes, grade the assignment. And once you've done that, you know, you'll see the little check mark there and then you can just X out of the screen, okay? So, when you click the link, it's gonna open up in a new window. You can come back to this window to see these instructions so that you can just toggle back and forth between the two windows to make sure you get all the steps done, okay? But again, I'm gonna edit this because in between two and four, there's a whole bunch of things going on, okay? So I have to mention those things. Again, I didn't know until about like 20 minutes ago. <laughs> so I'll go edit that. Actually, let me make a note, edit. Engage setup page. That way I don't forget. Okay, so this one's a big one. This is like the biggest thing I need to mention because if you don't do this process part right, um, you can't continue, okay? You won't be able to get into the homework later. Even if you do this step correctly, right now, currently, Cengage is having an issue with those assignment links, okay? So even if you do the setup for the subscription correctly, the, these, this link down here might still not work. It was originally in the orientation, but I took it out and I'm gonna have to change the due date for it because it's not working right now, okay? So I will keep you guys posted. I just uh, met with them at noon today and they couldn't figure it out. And I'm gonna meet again with them on um, tomorrow at 10 a.m. So I will keep you guys posted on the progress of those um, web assign assignment links, okay? Web assign is where all your homework is. So we need to get those fixed ASAP, okay? So I'll keep you posted on that. Other than that, everything else we should be able to go through, okay? Um, so the first thing is just like the getting started and the welcome. I'm gonna kind of go through all these little pages here. You can go through it on your own, you can read them. Make sure you read them because I'm not going to read everything. 
and there might be pieces of information that might be useful to you, okay? So it's just saying, um, if you have questions, go to the home page and then you can, um, you can contact me by phone, you can contact me by email. I prefer that you contact me by texting because it goes directly to my phone. And because we are remote, um, sometimes I will be here in my office and sometimes I won't be in my office. So the phone is not really the best um, way to contact me, okay? I'll show you where to sign up for the texting um, in just a bit. But I know for a fact that on, I think it's, uh, I think it's next week sometime, um, September 1st and September 2nd, they're doing something to this building and I'm not allowed in here. So I have to work um, from home on those two days. So the phone would not be a good, a good way to get in contact with me for those specific two days. Okay, the next page is the tech support. I just wanna make you guys aware that this is here. If you're having problems with signing into ACES, getting into Canvas, if you're having issues downloading the lockdown browser, which you're gonna have to download later, um, the help desk is the people you wanna call, okay? They may be able to jump on Zoom with you and walk you through the process of downloading that software if you're, if you're not able to figure out how to do it on your own, okay? Um, I am not the best tech savvy person. Um, there's a whole bunch of things about computers that I do not know. And so I'm not going to be necessarily the best person to come to when it comes to like downloading software and stuff like that. Um, so your best bet is to contact those guys because those guys are computer people. They are the IT people. Okay. Um, and then there's some other little drop down arrows. So if you wanted to talk about Canvas, you know, if you have the Respondus lockdown browser, they can help you with all of that information there. Um, you can even do that live chat that I was talking about right here. Okay. So if you have problems with lockdown browser later, come to this tech support website or page and then click on Canvas Respondus support and click live chat. So make sure you're aware that that is there. Um, Zoom, it doesn't look like anybody had any issues with getting into Zoom. Most of you are preferring not to have video on. I have no preference either way, whether your video is on or off. I like it if I can see your face, that helps me. I feel more comfortable, um, but that is completely up to you, okay? Um, now the Cengage Unlimited, Again, there are issues. <laughs> I wouldn't bother them too much just yet with all of the support because they know that we're that us specifically, St. Phillips College is having an issue and they're currently working on it, okay? So maybe like later, if you have an issue, you can come and bother them. But for right now, just leave the Cengage people alone until I figure out what's going on, okay? So notice how every single page, I'm just hitting the next button, the next button, the next button. That's all you need to do to keep progressing through the module, okay? And if you ever um, wanna come back and figure out where you are, just click modules. And for you, you'll see little check marks for each page that you've already seen. For me, there, <laughs> there's no check marks because it's, it's a different view, okay? Uh, I think I'll show you through here. So if I go to student view, notice how it's gonna block out everything, right? It's not letting me see anything until I view this particular page, okay? And I'm just gonna click on them real quick because I just want you to see what I was referring to. So let me scroll, click next. And then I think I'm gonna go back to my modules just so you can see those check marks. See how it checks them? So I've done all of those things, okay? And as you keep going, it'll keep adding all the check marks. Now notice here, in order for me to get the check mark, I have to score at least a one. And here, same thing. Um, here, I have to score at least a two. There are three questions in this quiz, but that's not important. Um, you just need to get two of them right because one of them specifically asks you, what kind of device are you using for this class? And there's gonna be tons of different answers. So I couldn't make, I had to make a put something in there so that it would mark it right. So most times you're gonna get that problem marked wrong, but it's okay because you only need two points, not three points to move on, okay? 
It's just for me to go back and make sure that nobody's using like Chromebooks or cell phones um, to access the course because you will have problems if you try to do the whole course um, using a cell phone or using Chromebooks, okay? Um, but let me get out of this. I just wanted you to kind of understand the progression of how the orientation module is gonna work, okay? And you'll notice it took me like a few, two, three minutes to go through a few of these things. Now this page right here is very handy. You're going to want um, to be able to come back to this page whenever you need a, a resource, okay? So there's a whole bunch of stuff in here. If you need a calculator, this is going to be your best friend right here, this link, because that link will explain to you how to get a calculator. Essentially, you have to fill out a Google form and then you have to pick a time slot of when you'll come to campus to grab the calculator. Um, and so you just go through that whole thing. If it asks you what class you're taking, make sure you're telling them that it's the um, 2412. I'm gonna click it. So you want um, this, this is the class that you're taking, 2412, that's pre-cal, okay? And so the calculator that we're gonna use is, it's actually TI-36X Pro. I have it here in my um, office. It's just like the images there. It's black with gray trim on the side. Um, you can use, these other scientific calculators, there's gobs and gobs of calculators, right? You can use any kind of scientific calculator. You can even use a basic calculator, which just does add, subtract, multiply, and divide. Um, the only thing you can't use is the graphing calculators. And the easiest way to tell the difference is if your calculator has a square or square-ish <laughs> um, screen, then it's a graphing calculator. If it has a a uh, predominant uh, rectangle size where it's long ways um, screen, then that's probably a scientific calculator. So notice the difference between this image here, the TI-84, and then the Inspire. Both of those have um, screens that are more of like a square shape, whereas the scientific calculator up top and the 36X Pro calculator, you can obviously see it's more horizontal than it is height. Um, so those are gonna be the calculators that you're allowed to use. The graphing calculator, it's, I mean, it's not that it's, I don't know. There's too many things that you can type in that calculator that it will do for you that I'm expecting you to learn and know on your own, if that makes sense, okay? So I don't want anyone getting too used to using the graphing calculator because then you're not learning the information that I need you to learn, okay? So it kind of enables people a little bit and that's why I try to avoid using that particular calculator, okay? Um, but the 36 Pro will have everything you need for it. If you are an engineering student, that's also the same calculator that you're gonna need for your engineering classes. I do have a lot of students in here that are engineering. Um, and so you're gonna need the same calculator. It does matrices in there. So that'll be helpful when you get to um, some of the higher level math classes and some of those engineering classes, okay? Okay. Here's where the form is at. You click on that, you type in all your info, select the time you're gonna come pick up your stuff and then you're good to go, okay? So make sure you read through this page if you're gonna borrow one um, from the school. If not, you can purchase them. They have them. I think I have a link to Amazon inside the syllabus. They have them on Amazon for like less than $19. They have them at Walmart. They have them at Office Depot or Office Max and they should all cost $20 or less, okay? It's not a super expensive calculator, but it is very, very, very useful, okay? Um, so where was I? There we go. This is the big one. Some of you have actually already signed up for Remind. Um, Remind, there's a video in there. I'm not gonna play it. You can watch it if you want to. Um, but it's basically like a third party so that I don't have your cell phone number, you don't have my cell phone number, and we're still able to text back and forth with each other, okay? And that's gonna be extremely helpful for our class because we're in limbo right now, right? 
We don't know if we're gonna come back on campus, if we're not gonna come back on campus. And then what if somebody gets sick, we have to go to remote for 10 days. Like it's a whole thing, right? <laughs> so we never know when we're gonna be having class or when we're not gonna be having class, when I should be jumping on Zoom. So this is gonna help immensely so that if I find out, you know, Monday night that somebody was sick and we've all been in class together, I can message everyone, hey, someone's been sick in the class, you probably wanna go get tested. We're not gonna meet face-to-face, -face. we're gonna meet on Zoom Tuesday morning, right? Um, we wanna be able to have that instant communication um, because a lot of times students don't check their email on a regular basis, it just is a fact, okay? Um, or their emails get swamped with all this other junk from the school that they never see my emails um, that are kind of emergent emergency, okay? So this is a Cengage. I have already sent a couple of announcements. So I did say that um, Cengage was working on fixing the web assign links. Some of you may not even have known that there was an issue. You were waiting to come see me today before trying to do anything and that's okay. Um, but I was, there were some people trying to do stuff and they were the ones kind of figuring out that things weren't working properly. So I do need everyone to complete the entire orientation module because the big thing that's not working has been removed from the orientation module. So you should be able to go through the entire thing and finish it completely. And I did want to make you guys aware that if when you get to the syllabus acknowledged discussion, if you do ask a question, make sure you go back to that discussion so that you can see your answer, okay? I have a lot of people asking the question, but then um, it's not. Okay, um, yes. If you're clicking join remind on your um, computer, I need you to type in your cell phone number and not your email. Remember the purpose of it. The purpose of it is so I can contact you instantly without you checking your email, right? So you don't wanna put your email address in there because then it requires you to go check your email, which was what I was trying to avoid, right? <laughs> so make sure you're putting your cell phone number in there or the cell phone number of someone who would give you that message immediately, okay? If you don't have your own cell phone number. Um, but there is a class code. So if you need the class code, let me look it up. It's supposed to be super easy, but I forgot it. Okay, it is two, four, I'm gonna type it in the chat, okay? So remind class code is gonna be 2412023, which is basically our course and our section number, but then you're gonna put F2F for face-to-face. -face. So I put the remind class code in the chat. So if you do try to go to remind, um, you should be able to click this little blue button that says join class. And then it'll ask you for your name and your email and make you set up an account. And then if at any point it asks you for a class code, make sure that you're typing in um, the code that I typed in the chat. So it's 2412023F2F. And that is a code specifically for this class for this semester, okay? I have a question. Sure. So uh, trying to go to the book on the Cengage, mm -hmm. it's giving me an error invalid deployment ID. And then I go back to try and relook at the pictures on Canvas and it's showing just like a little lock on every single picture. Hmm. I know I've seen those locks. I have no idea what they mean inside Canvas, but I do know that Cengage is having an issue with everything right now. <laughs> so um, they're supposed to fix that. If it doesn't get fixed, I always will make room for, I'm not going to make anything do that's impossible to do, right? <laughs> so um, if they don't get it fixed, and they probably aren't, so I'm probably going to have to spend, um, extend the deadline for this orientation, at least until maybe tomorrow. I will keep extending it until they get it fixed and we can finish and keep going with our class, okay? So don't ever worry, as long as you're going in and you're signing up for the Remind and you're doing as much of that orientation as you can, I will not be smart dropping anybody, okay? Unless I just see like you haven't even logged in, you haven't even done anything, you know, that's the kind of person that 
that's the purpose of the smart drop is for those that are not taking everything serious from the very beginning. Okay. Um, and it looks like all of you guys logged in here today. So you all have made your first um, class attendance. So that's good too. So I don't plan to be drop smart dropping anybody. Um, I know it sounds scary, right? <laughs> but um, <laughs> but I don't plan to be dropping anybody from this particular class. Um, just as long as we can try to get through that orientation as soon as possible, because it will unlock the next thing. And when we start doing our lectures, that's when we really need to have things unlocked for sure. Okay. So no worries there. Um, but thank you for bringing that up. They, there is there is something going on with Cengage today that wasn't happening yesterday. Because yesterday people were able to click on that Cengage Unlimited subscription link and they were able to sign up just fine yesterday, even this morning. <laughs> and then all of a sudden around 11 o'clock, it just started giving everybody errors. So I'm I, they are aware and they are working on fixing it. So I'm hoping that they get it fixed soon, but I am still in close contact with them. So as soon as I hear like everything's good and ready to go, I'm gonna be sending out messages. Now I choose, I prefer to use the Remind but if not everyone has signed up for Remind, when I get that info, I will send it as a Canvas um, message because I can message everybody inside Canvas, okay? And so do we use Remind like uh, we reply to the text message that it comes to our phone and it replies to you back? It does, mm -hmm. Okay. So um, it will tell me that so-and-so has joined. And then if, if you message me, you just say hi or hello, I'll message you back and say, hey, this is where you can message me questions. Um, if it should be good, I think sometimes some people have settings where the replies are turned off, but I always return my replies on. So if you're trying to reply and I'm not getting your messages, um, let me know by email and I can go into the remind thing and I can fix um, the settings because you probably have replies turned off for some reason. Okay, um, so these are the three announcements that I sent, uh, I guess this morning, is just to kind of give you guys a heads up of what's going on. Um, and then again, I sent this out, but we already know that there's some issues going on there. So it's not like a do or die situation at all, okay? Um, let me go back to my modules. So I can keep talking out the rest of it. Okay, so the next item here after you signed up for Remind, um, and, and there are quite a few of you have. I mean, I have a lot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight of you already in Remind. So I'm only missing three people. That's awesome. Um, so as soon as those three people uh, sign up for Remind, a lot of the... Um, announcements that I need to make, I will do them from Remind because they go straight to your cell phone. It's just more convenient. Okay, this one is literally an assignment to see if you can read and follow directions. That's literally the purpose of this assignment um, because most of you know the netiquette. Y'all know not to like type in all caps um, because supposedly that's like shouting, right? Um, you know, no profanity, things like that. Um, the pretty basic ground rules for online discussions or even Zoom communication. Um, so it's a matching game. I'm going to preview it just so you can see what it looks like. But it literally has all the paragraphs up at the top, right? And says, participate is this. Helping others is this. And then it goes on and on and on. No yelling, blah, 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 right? And it's literally a matching game, okay? So there's no reason why anyone should get this wrong. <laughs> as long as you're just paying attention to what it says under participate, you're paying attention to what it says under no flaming, right? The sentence here, criticism must be constructive. Go to no flaming. Criticism must be constructive, right? It's pretty simple. Um, but believe it or not, I have had people get a whole thing wrong. Um, so I do give you three attempts. It should not take more than a second attempt, but if it does, you have that third chance to get that one correct. It's just a matching game. That's all it is. Make sure you read the paragraphs, but it is a matching thing, okay? This here is in the syllabus, of course, 
but um, they wanted me to have a whole page for it inside Canvas. And it's essentially just breaking down the module um, and then it's breaking down what everything we're gonna go through in class. So every day you have dates on when we're gonna be talking about what. And I cannot remember, yes, I did. I, I scheduled in, I think two buffer days, maybe just one, Oy. okay. I think you guys just have one buffer day. So this is just to kind of help in case any of these sections happen to overflow into the next day. Um, we have a day of wiggle room down here, okay? Um, if we don't need to use that wiggle room day, I'm just gonna start pushing everything else up and then keep that wiggle room day for when we need it, okay? If we don't use it by the Thanksgiving break in week 14, you're just gonna, um, have an extra day off. You just won't, we won't have class at all that Wednesday or that uh, week 14, okay? So it is subject to change a little bit, okay? I don't know how long it's gonna take for us to get through every single section. Some classes, they don't really ask a whole lot of questions. I don't like that, but <laughs> some classes don't ask a lot of questions and I just speed through everything and we're done super early. And then other classes I have where people ask a lot of questions and they're more involved, which is what I prefer but then it kind of sometimes might make me run over time. And if I run over time, I have to stop and then I have to continue the next day, okay? So that's really the reason for that buffer day in there in case that happens. And it happens so much that I can't even finish that section and finish the one I'm supposed to be talking about that day, okay? Um, okay, so that's the schedule just to kind of give you some, and it also gives you a heads up on like planning. Uh, hopefully we're doing the tests in person by the time we get to a test. Um, but I don't know, we don't know what's gonna happen. This is where it talks about the Respondus Monitor and it gives you a lot of the information that you need if you take a test online. So if you have to take a test online, we will revisit this page and read everything. Um, if not, again, we're just doing this just in case, okay? So if you have to do a test online, you do have to use what's called the Respondus Lockdown Browser, which prevents you from using other um, browsers. It prevents you from using other applications on your devices. It prevents you from opening up other tabs all that good stuff, just so that you're only doing the test and that's it, right? And you should be, you should only have the test in front of you, whatever paper you're gonna be scribbling on, and then your um, calculator. And that's exactly how it would be in a face-to-face -face environment. You'd have the paper test in front of you, right? Well, we're not gonna have paper tests, but you'd have the computer test in front of you and you'd have your paper to write on and you'd have your calculator and that's it, right? No books, no secondary devices, no cell phones, like where you can use them. Um, and so that's the same thing that it's trying to emulate here online, okay? Um, and the Respondus Lockdown Browser does record you, okay? So because of that, you do need to have a webcam. I noticed that some of you obviously have one because I see you guys in the screens, um, but some of you may not have webcams yet. You can put off getting one, but once we get closer to that test date, if we are still remote, you will have to get the webcam. Okay, um, if we are still remote. And then make sure that when you're doing the, the Respondus monitor, it's gonna ask you to like scan the room. I, I mean, I've seen all kinds of rooms in all kinds of conditions <laughs> because of this Respondus monitor. I wouldn't worry too much about all that. What I really need to see is the area that you're working on. So the space that you're working on. If you're working on a desk, I need to be able to see that whole desk. I need to make sure that there's no other computers, no other laptops, no other phones or tablets around you that you could have reached to to use while you're taking the test, okay? Because while you're taking the test, you have to remain in the webcam um, frame. If you come out of the webcam frame, then um, that's a violation of test security. Okay, because now I don't know where you are, what you're doing. You could be, you could have walked to the other room, go found the answer and then came back and sat down and wrote the answer, right? So you have to stay in that webcam frame. Um, and that's all that these things are saying is that 
you're aware that you might need a webcam. Um, if we have to do a test online, um, that you're aware that you have to have, be free of all these other extra things that you're not allowed to have. Um, the only thing you should have is the computer or laptop that you're using to take your test on, your note page, you'll get a note page, um, your blank paper, and then your calculator or your pencil. And then the last one is just asking you um, or letting you know that, I guess it's asking you if you're aware that the instructor cannot see you in the frame, that your grade could not be recorded. And that's for test security. Okay. So it's not like I'm trying to, you know, be mean there. It's just I have standards that I have to uphold as well. It sounds pretty locked down. Yeah, <laughs> right, it's all the name too. Um, so this here, I'm not gonna click it, but if you click it, it's gonna take you to the website where you're going to actually download the lockdown browser, okay? Once you download that lockdown browser, then you'll be able to do this quiz down here, okay? So you'll, lock, you'll download the lockdown browser and then before you actually use it, you can look at a couple of pages before you get to there. So this one is from the department. So it might look a little bit different than my pages look, um, but it's telling you there, do not purchase anything for this class. You've already paid for everything. It's in that Cengage Unlimited stuff. So you gotta, you gotta get that signed up. I know there's issues with it right now, but we'll get over those. Um, and then there's the calculator info as well. So, I mean, we pretty much already talked about this. The only thing we didn't do is show you a picture of the book. Um, so there's a picture of the book. <laughs> and then the next page is the syllabus. So it's got everything in there. I did have some people that were confused and thank goodness they got the clarification before they came, before they missed today's class. Because today is Tuesday. And I know that in your ACEs, it says TR. And somebody thought, and it happens every semester, so don't feel bad if it was you that was that I was talking to. Every semester, people misunderstand the TR as Thursday, and it's not. The T is for Tuesday, and the R is for Thursday, okay? So on your schedules, you'll always see the letters M, T, W, R, or F. They can't use T twice, right? So they, use, they chose to use an R. And the reason they chose to use the R is because if I put TH on your schedule, you're definitely gonna think that that's Thursday, right? Um, so they tried to eliminate the, confuse it, the confusion by putting an R instead of an H, and but it, people still get confused. So just be aware that the class does meet twice per week on Tuesdays and on Thursdays. If you are unable to make both of those class sessions, um, there's always options, but, um, you can watch the class recordings because I am gonna be re recording everything. Um, so if you do miss a day for whatever reason, you can watch the class recording, but you're not gonna have the same interaction. You're not gonna be able to just like interrupt me and ask a question. And you, can, you could get through the whole video and just be totally, utterly confused. So it really does help if you can jump in and ask a question real quick and then continue on with the rest of the lesson, right? So I strongly, strongly, strongly encourage you but there is a way to work around it if you happen to sign up for the class and you didn't realize that it meant Tuesday and Thursday. Um, but I don't wanna encourage anybody to be absent. That's not what I'm trying um, to say here, okay? Um, so if you, it's long, the syllabus is super long. If I print it, it's like 50 something pages. It's super long. And that's why I had the module so they could break everything up. Um, but it's just gobs and gobs and gobs of information in here. Now, if you click on this, I think it'll open it in a new window. Yes. But that's what the calculator looks like. And see how it's only like 1897. Okay. So you can get it from Office Depot, Office Max, other places like that, where you wouldn't have to pay for shipping. Um, if you have Amazon Prime already, you wouldn't have to pay for shipping but this is the calculator and what it looks like, okay? Dun, dun, dun. Um, also, if you're going, if, if, if we have to take the test online, um, you have to, in person, you just hand me your papers, right? And I grade them. 
but online, I still have to see your papers and I still have to grade them. So you'll need to be able to upload those papers. Now, what I tell people is that you want to get a scanner app if you don't already have like a one of those ancient scanner devices, um, because you will have to turn that stuff into a PDF file and it has to be one PDF file. So if you wrote on like six pages, you still have to get all those six images in one PDF file and they need to be in order. So the easiest way that I have found to use it is to use an app called Cam Scanner. And I had someone get at, <laughs> get upset with me already um, because they were thinking that they had to pay like the $39.99 um, subscription fee for Cam Scanner. That fee is only necessary if you want to be ad free if you want to get rid of the stupid watermark that's at the bottom that says cam scanner, which I don't care if that's there or not. Um, and then if you want to have like access to like other stuff that you can do with your PDF files, we don't need all of that. I don't care if an ad pops up, I can exit <laughs> and I can move on with my day, right? So if you do use cam scanner, don't think that you need to pay for that subscription, okay? You can use cam scanner for free. Um, it's just that after you create your document, you're probably going to get an ad that pops up. Just close it. Um, sometimes you have to wait a few seconds before you can close it, but that's it. And then you're done. Okay. Um, there are videos. If you click on any one of these links, it all takes you to the same video on how to use Cam Scanner. So you basically click your photo. You can move the little, um, they're like little dots on your screen to fit right around your page so that I don't get like the picture of your desk or you know, the picture of your calculator on the side of your paper. You can literally put those little dots so that I just get the piece of paper in the, in the file, okay? And then once you say, yes, that's good, then you can click on another button and do the next page and then the next page and the next page. And then after you have all the pages done, then you can click, I want to share this as a PDF file and it'll go through that process for you, okay? So that video will have that process for you. It's also going to be later, you're gonna see that video later um, in the assignment that requires you to turn in your paperwork. You'll see that video again, okay? The breakdown for this class, oh God, 205%, well, that's wrong. <laughs> I have to fix that, I, there was a typo. Yes, we're gonna to have to pass that one. <laughs> You definitely need to pass the final, right? Um, so it should be 20%, 60%, and 20%. Okay, so I'll go in there and I need to edit. Edit breakdown to 20%. So it should be 20, 20, 20. And essentially, because we have, <laughs> um, somebody said they saw it and got very worried. Yeah, um, <laughs> that does look kind of funny. Um, Essentially, everything is 20%. Not each homework assignment, but the whole package of all the homework assignments and the reviews, um, those are all 20% of your grade, okay? And then we have three unit tests. So each one of those tests is 20% of your grade. And then the final exam at the end will also be 20% 20, 20 of your grade, okay? So that's the way the breakdown is going to work. Um, this is just has, you know, that's there in case you need it. I will bring it up later when we get closer to that date. If there's anybody I'm worried about, I'll mention it to you um, at that point in time. So we do have 19 homework assignments. And if you look at the overview, it doesn't look like a whole lot. I've had classes that were like, you know, go all the way down. I have to scroll down to get to all the assignments. So it doesn't look like a lot, but this stuff is intense, okay? Um, if you've never seen or used trigonometry, sine, cosine, tangent, it takes a lot to absorb the information, okay, because it's a lot of information. Um, and so we have to kind of try to spread it out, you know, as much as we can, but it's still a lot of information because it's all new for most of you, okay? So it might not look like a lot, but it is, I promise. <laughs> Um, and so that's the breakdown. The first unit is going to cover 9.4, which is mostly algebra, and then chapter six, but we break chapter six up. 
So the first five sections will be under the first test, and then the last two sections will be in the second test, okay? Because chapter six is a lot, it's a lot. Um, I'm not gonna try to sugarcoat it, it's, it's difficult. Um, some of it might be easier than other parts of it, but it's still pretty hard. Um, and so tests are timed. You can take it only in one attempt if we're in class. Um, it's the time of the class period, right? If we're, if we happen to do it in Zoom, I can have all of y'all share all y'all screens, um, which I don't wanna do because I don't want anybody seeing anybody else's um, screens. But, more than likely, if we're not in person, we'll probably be using that Respondus monitor, monitor and the lockdown browser, okay? Um, you are allowed to use your scientific calculator or a basic calculator. No graphing calculators, though, okay? Big one. Um, you do have to, quote unquote, demonstrate understanding, meaning you cannot just write the answer. The answer is five. Um, there's a whole process in finding a lot of these answers. Even I myself can't just say, oh, the answer is five. <laughs> so you'll have to show like how you get that answer or explain how you get that answer. And saying I typed it in the calculator is not an explanation, okay? Um, you have to use your reasoning and your logic for this. And it's all in preparation for the calculus classes because when you get to the calculus classes, you have to be able to explain and justify every single thing that you do in those classes. Um, so just kind of like practice, right? Let's let's get into that that mindset now, so that when we get to calculus, it's not a big issue. Okay. Um, your calculators cannot be used to solve or graph. However, they can be used to you know simplify fractions, to add, subtract, multiply, and divide positive and negative numbers. Um, to evaluate trig values. Like if I say, what's the trig, uh, what's the sign of 90 degrees? You will be able to put that in your calculator. As long as you learn how to use a calculator, I will be using the calculator while I do the lectures. So I will show you how to be using it. I will be using this calculator, the TI-36X Pro. So if you want me to explain to you how to type things in your calculator, you'll have to get this one, okay? There are way too many calculators out there for me to explain how to type it in every single one of those. I haven't even used a lot of those calculators, so I wouldn't even know how to type everything in every single calculator. So that's the reason why we have like one specific for the class. Okay, um, you can read through all of this stuff. It's all that same things. And then don't forget that if you do, if you know, that you um, require accommodations from the disability office, make sure that you're clicking on the disability services. It's here, it's in my homepage, and it was in that student resources page. Um, there's all kinds of reasons why people would get, I can't even get into the list of why people would need accommodations, but you can go there to find out if you need one. Um, and then if you do, what they are, okay? Some of the, the um, the accommodations might include being able to use a calculator during testing. That really isn't gonna help anyone because everyone's allowed to use a calculator. Um, and then having a note sheet during testing, everyone gets a note sheet during testing. Um, the biggest one that's really gonna affect you or have access to lectures afterward, everyone's gonna have access to lectures afterward. Um, and it does come with a, a, transcribe, a transcript. So you can see, it, um, if I guess if you're like hearing impaired, you can see all of the words that are being transcribed um, in that video. Okay, so everything will be there. The only big one that will differentiate um, an accommodation letter versus students that don't have an accommodation letter is um, the timing that you get on tests. So I haven't set a time yet for the first test because I have to take the first test myself. And then once I take it and I, you know, try to write nice and neat and make everything look nice. And I don't try to rush through it. Um, I just try to do it real nice and neat, mostly because I use that attempt as the solutions. Mm -hmm. 
So I wanna make sure that I'm explaining everything correctly when I'm taking the test and that I'm writing everything right because I use those for the solutions afterward. Um, but I take it myself and then I multiply my time by three. And that supposedly is how long it should take a student to do it, granted if they understand the material enough, right? Strong enough. If you don't understand the material strong enough, you could probably sit there for five days and still not figure it out, okay? So that's how the test time is um, determined, okay? So I'm sorry, there are some people that are like, it's just not enough time, then you need to talk to the disability services so that you can get twice that amount of time. So essentially you would get six times the amount of time that it took me to take the test. And again, I don't rush. If I rush, I'm not trying to brag, um, I kind of am bragging, but I'm not trying to brag, but I am a very, very fast person. You might notice like the way I talk and I'm trying to keep it at a slower pace. I generally talk super fast. Um, and so I also work <laughs> super fast. And when I'm doing my math, just me personally, if I were taking my own test, I could probably finish the test in 10 to 15 minutes. It does not take me that long to do it. And sometimes even in these classes, when I'm writing every single thing out, it might take me 15, 20 minutes to do the whole test. And that's why I have to multiply my time. The department says by three. If I feel like I multiply my time by three and I don't feel comfortable that you guys will be able to do it, I might add more time onto that, okay? Just because I know that I myself am generally fast, okay? And not everybody is fast. Some people like to work at a slower pace and that is okay. I need to, um, I try to accommodate for that a little bit. Um, but double time, you need a, <laughs> you need an accommodation letter for that. Okay. So there is a final review in there. You could download it now if you wanted, if you wanted to look at it, but, um, we will cover that review once we get toward that week, right after the Thanksgiving break, because that's all we're going to do that week. So that week, we're just going to work on the final review. And then the following week is final exams. So we're trying to shoot for getting everything done um, before the Thanksgiving break, okay? Dun, 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 there is tutoring. I always suggest that if you get stuck or have problems on things that you ask me during class, use me as the resource first. Um, if you're still stuck or it's at an hour where I'm unavailable, um, like at 11 o'clock at night, um, then you can go ahead and use Math World if it's in their hours, right? Here's their hours. And if it's within that time frame, you can use Math World. I would suggest Math World first. If it's like two o'clock in the morning and Math World's not open, then you can use BrainFuse tutoring. Okay. Now, BrainFuse is right here on the left hand side. Math World is actually in that student resources tab. Okay. And it'll be in another link in a little bit later. Okay. We haven't gotten to it yet. Um, but brain fuse, I think you're only allowed so many hours of tutoring inside brain fuse. So you kind of want to use that as your last resort. Okay. You don't want to eat up all of those hours and then not be able to have any more tutoring for the rest of the semester. So make sure that you um, go through the channels. There's also the TNT Center. I know that they have tutors for every subject. So you might want to check them out too um, and see if they have anything online. I don't work with the TNT Center. It's in a whole nother building. It has nothing to do with my department. Um, so I don't know how well their tutors are, how, what high, what level they tutor up to. Um, I don't know their hours, nothing like that, but there is a link to their website here if you want to go to it and check out that information. Okay. Excuse me, Professor. <clears throat> um, is it okay if we go to the, because my homeschool is SAC, is it okay if I could use those teachers over there in case? Um, yeah. There's none over here at St. Phillips. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Always use everything that you have access to. All right. Okay, that's academic integrity. You can read through that or go look at the handbook if you want to. Don't cheat, right? That's all it says. <laughs> that's what it says in a nutshell, don't cheat. <laughs> um, okay, so for the schedule, we kind of already had a page about that. And I think that's pretty much it as far as the syllabus. So read through it. 
And then and see, somebody's already saying that phrase. I don't like that phrase. Um, but read through it. If you have questions, ask. I will answer it. I will tell you where to look um, to answer it. Um, and then if you do understand everything, then just do exactly as these people did, where they said, I understand the syllabus completely and thoroughly. If you see, there's somebody here who has questions. So I'm going to answer those when after we get out of class. OK. Um, but if you do have um, questions, make sure you come back to this discussion because I will answer them. OK. So if you have questions, at some point, come back just to keep checking to see if I've answered it. I will answer these as soon as we finish out of this class. Um, every single time I have a class, I go in and I just keep answering more and more stuff. That happened, yeah, I was in a meeting at that point. Um, so just keep posting in there and then keep looking out for the answers, okay? Um, this is the quiz. I don't want to open it. I don't want you guys to see the problems. This is not for a grade, okay? I had some people like, oh man, I did horrible. It's okay. Um, I'm going to try to take things slow at the very beginning to make sure that we're all on the same page as we keep progressing. I know some of us um, are a little bit weak in algebra, just period. We're just weak <laughs> in algebra. And then some of us just need a little bit of a reminder to get the wheels uh, going again. Um, so everybody's at different places. And then somebody just might be a pro at algebra. Everybody's at a different place. I'm going to bore the people who are pros out their minds at the beginning. I apologize, but I have to make sure that everybody's on the same page so that we can all be successful as a class, OK? So if I'm going really, really slow, too slow, I apologize. But just bear with me until the rest of the class catches up, OK? Um, but I want to make sure that I explain everything. I am not the kind of instructor that tells you you should already know that, OK? Um, I'm just Thank not. Thank you for that. I had a teacher that in college algebra that chewed us out because of you should know this already. And it's like, and he would really chew us out saying it wasn't a good experience. So thank you for that. No, I, and, and I have experienced that personally. And I had to, I had to tell the teacher, like, look, professor, this doesn't make any sense. I needed 70% to pass the last class. So that means that I don't understand 30% of that class. That's a big gap. 30% of not knowing the material, right? And my gap might not be the same as the guy next to me. It might not be the same, and their gap might not be the same as the girl next to them. So everybody's on a different page and you can't treat everyone as if they all got 100s and everything <laughs> the previous semester, okay? So I try not, I try my hardest not to be that way, okay? Um, so because of that, if you have questions, if I factored something too darn fast for you, stop me and be like, hey, miss, <laughs> how did you do that? And then I can just walk you through it real quick. I mean, it literally takes like two or three minutes to explain something properly. So it's not like it takes gobs and gobs of time, OK? So if you do have questions, just keep asking. If I did something that you didn't catch, ask me to repeat it. Ask me to slow down. I talk really fast and it, it's not going to change. <laughs> I've tried to change how fast I talk and it, it I just, I, I can control it sometimes. And especially with math, I get super excited. And so then it makes me talk even faster. Um, so if that happens, just say, hey, miss, slow down. <laughs> try to say that again um, or try to explain this or that. And I will definitely go into it. OK. Um, Somebody is chatting. Oh, da, 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 da. Yeah, that does happen a lot with people. Somebody is saying that they got lots of hundreds and nineties on their homework, but then when it came to the test, um, they did real bad. That's why I require everyone to turn in their paperwork because there are two types of students. There is the type of student that has absolutely no idea what they're doing or how to do it, don't even understand what the problem's asking them. And then there's the student who knows what the problem's asking them, has an idea of how to get the, the answer, and then screwed up when they multiplied two numbers at the end. 
okay? Those are two totally different kinds of students. Both of them are going to get the answer wrong. I do not believe that both of them should have the same grade in the class because one knows absolutely nothing about that problem and the other one knows everything about that problem. They just made an arithmetic error, right? And so they're not in the same boat. And I don't think that as far as testing goes that they should get the same amount of credit, which is why I ask you to turn in your paperwork. So that way I can see where you're at and which, where are you on that spectrum? Are you the one that, that knows how to do it all and got the right answer? Are you the one that has no idea what you're doing, but guessed and got the right answer? You're not gonna get credit that way. Guessing does not work in this class. Um, <laughs> or are you the type of person that wrote out all your steps and made a small, tiny mistake? Or are you the person that left it all blank because you had no idea how to do the problem, okay? Each one of those gets a different kind of score, okay? And so I try to break everything down so that I can score fairly for everyone. And I do use a rubric. So when I do your test, you'll see like this many points comes from this, this many points comes from that, so on and so forth. So you know how each problem is being graded, okay? Um, I, it's all to be fair. And normally in a face-to-face -face class, um, I usually grade the first page right away and I grade everybody's first page. And then after that, I just start grading all the other pages, like page two for everybody, page three for everybody. And the reason I do it that way is so that I don't remember whose paper goes to who. It keeps all the bias out of the situation, okay? First page is kind of hard to avoid because your name's usually at the top. But other than that, um, the rest of it, I try to not focus on whose papers I'm looking at because it really doesn't matter. So, there's that video again, because it says that you're gonna have to do the lockdown browser to take this quiz. Once you take it, after you submit it, then you have to come in and you have to do the cam scanner part. So this tutorial goes on how to do it. That's the password to take the quiz. Um, and I don't know why it has all these arrow, these drop down menus, but it's weird. Um, like somebody mentioned, I think at the beginning that they didn't do their paperwork. It's okay, just write page one on one paper, page two on another paper and try to still create that PDF file, okay? Um, but on the test, if we have to take the test online, you wanna make sure your name is on the page. Um, and the reason why you wanna make sure your name is on the page, and I might even fold them when I grade them, but the reason why you want it there is so that when I have a whole pile of papers that I printed, <laughs> I know whose pages go for who, okay? So I don't get anything mixed up. Um, in the paper test in a class, um, or even in the test in the class, I can staple all your stuff together and then you can turn it in that way. I don't need your name on every single page at that point, okay? So it's a little bit different when we're face-to-face. -face. But again, these are all instructions in case we have to do things remote or online, okay? Um, so you just wanna make sure this makes it easier for me to grade if all your problems are numbered and they're in order. I don't want chicken scratch. You're not supposed to be turning in chicken scratch. I want you to eloquently explain what you're doing, why you're doing it and how you're doing it, okay? Um, don't just, just scribble junk down and that's it, okay? It, it's different from probably what you were doing in the past. In the past, I know a lot of people were used to just scribbling down whatever they need to, um, and then, or not even write anything at all, and then turn in their tests, right? And if they got it right, yay, if they didn't, oh well. Okay, so, uh, excuse me. Sure, sure. Um, since you're, you're saying this is a more advanced class, so uh, could you go more in detail about how to, um, justify the answer because yeah. uh for because me like um if i'll do it i'll go like left to right left to right and i do i put a line in between like the line went here this is what i did next here or do i have to write out if you're writing them right if you're writing the lines as long as they're like above one another i'm okay mm -hmm. if you start like doing something over here and then doing something over there <laughs> and jumping all around the page um mm -hmm. you might want to like circle something and just write scratch work and then show me the actual solutions. Now on the reviews, I will work out all the problems. And so you'll have an example of like what you need to write. And if there's problems where it's a visual problem, like maybe it's a graph and I'm asking you a question about the graph, it will say in the directions, like you do not need to show work for this because 
it's a visual thing, right? It's literally, can you look at the graph and pick out the information, okay? But you definitely will have examples of the explanations or the justifications that I'm looking for when we do the reviews, okay? And then I think you'll even have an example after this quiz, because after you take this quiz, a few more pages down, you're gonna see the answers. And in there, you'll see how I explain everything, okay? Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, so sure. two things. Number one, I want to apologize in advance because I have terrible handwriting. <laughs> okay. If, uh, if you need me to rewrite I anything or okay. clarify it, just, you know, let me know. Um, but number two, uh, it didn't allow me to view the answers for them, for the quiz. It, uh, it said I was locked out. Okay. That might have to do with the modules. If you go back out, I'm going to table that question. Because when we're done, I want you to share your screen and then I might be able to help you there. Okay. okay? But we'll definitely help you because you should be able to get to them, okay? Um, and then I know that there's a bunch of locks on people's screens and I don't know why those locks are there. I'm curious. So I'd like to see your screen too for that reason, just because I have no idea what those are or why they're there. Um, but once you do take this readiness quiz, be ready because the next thing is for you to upload that paperwork, okay? And so there, there's the link to the scan, CAM scanner tutorial again if you need it. Um, and then just try to do it within 30 minutes, okay? As you start getting used to it, it might take you like two or three minutes to get it done, okay? Um, so it should not take any more than 30 minutes, which is why the 30 minute block is the time constraint. And I'll explain the reason of why there's a 30 minute time constraint. For here, it's just practice. If you don't do it within 30 minutes, you're not gonna be penalized or anything. I'm just gonna send you a message that says, practice the process and try to get it under 30 minutes. If we need to do this, right? The big if is in the background always, because we're gonna be face-to-face -face hopefully soon. And hopefully we don't have to do this. But if we do, what I am trying to avoid is people submitting the test on the computer at home and then going back over their test papers and then changing all their answers or trying to correct anything that they were doing before they actually turn in the work. I do not want your corrections. I wanna see where your brain was going while you were taking the test, okay? I don't wanna see your afterthoughts. So that's the reason for that 30 minute window is so that People are not sitting there trying to correct their test papers. They're already starting to get that paperwork um, submitted, okay? If I give you five hours, you're more inclined to start looking, well, look at number five. I think I could have done this different. And <laughs> you start doing things like that, and I don't want you to do that, okay? You don't get the opportunity to do that in a face-to-face -face class, so it should not be the same. It should be exactly the same case online. You should not have the opportunity to be making test corrections, okay? That's all these rules are, is just trying to emulate the same experience at the same security that you would get in the classroom and then trying to create that same security on an online test, okay? Okay, we're almost at the end, almost. So you should, you're saying here it has like a big lock thing but it should bring you to this page after you've submitted the paperwork. If you have not submitted the paperwork, it won't let you see this page, okay? So make sure that you got your paperwork submitted. And as soon as you do have it submitted, this should unlock, which is why I wanna see your screen, Jonathan, so it's that I can make sure. That page, it lets me click on it, but when I do, it says that it's been locked. Oh, hmm. Dun, dun, dun. It doesn't say it for me, but that's probably because it's my file. So I, if I have to go look and I'm not going to do it now because I don't want to look at anybody's grades or anything while I'm sharing my screen, but I'll have you do it. Okay. And I'll see what's going on. And then if it does not still work for you, I'm going to have someone else who's at the same point as you try to go in there and look at it. And if they can do it, then it's something maybe on with, with your computer, your cookies, your cache or something that's happening. Um, but if they can't do it either, then I have to redo this file, okay? So I wanna make sure that it's not 
the file that's the problem <laughs> before I go replace it, okay? And I didn't want to click it. I kind of did, didn't I? <laughs> um, but <laughs> I didn't want to click it because uh, it had all the answers in there. But I didn't go through it too much, so it's okay. Um, this is the welcome. So this is just kind of an overview, basically, of all the stuff we've been talking about. Um, Canvas is our quote unquote virtual classroom. So once we start meeting face to face, you know, we'll have our normal regular le le uh, lectures. But if we do have to be in Zoom, Canvas is where everything's going to be held. OK. Um, I do not suggest that you use the Canvas app on the phone or the tablet. Um, only because it doesn't give you the modules in the same layout as it does using the laptop or the computer, okay? And so there might be things that you'll miss if you're trying to do everything on the app, on a tablet or a phone, okay? So I strongly encourage you to be using um, the desktop or the laptop. If it's something like I need to message the teacher real quick in, in uh, Canvas, then by all means, the app is probably more easy to use. But as far as like taking tests and things like that, you can't use the lap, the phone or the tablet. Um, the textbook, again, you've already been charged for this stuff. So do not, if you are prompted at any point during the orientation or in the assignments to ever pay for anything, you need to let me know because something's not right. You should not be paying for anything, okay? Do not put any credit card information in anywhere. Got it? Don't do it. <laughs> you should not be charged for anything. Okay, um, now again, it's a temporarily remote, so just keep that in mind. You want to keep using these things. We'll only need a webcam if we have to do the test monitoring, okay? I am hoping that we can go back on campus and be in the same room before we get to week five. And I feel like that's plenty of time for the school to figure out what it is they're going to do. So we'll see as we get closer to that date. Um, if we're going to be online or if we're going to be on the computer, okay? But I need us to be prepared just in case we have to be on the computer. So make sure you follow both of the instructions. I see that Jonathan has already replied. Jonathan, you're going to have to come back later when someone else has replied um, because this, this assignment has two parts. So you're going to respond and then you're also going to respond to someone else's post. But Jonathan can't do anything right now because no one else has posted, okay? So just make sure you come back later and say hi to somebody, okay? This is information about BrainFuse, but the link to actually log into BrainFuse is over here on the left, okay? And you can see for math, it's 24 seven. So that's why I said, if you're trying to get help at two o'clock in the morning, BrainFuse is your option, okay? if you don't have a really cool friend that knows math. Dun, dun, dun. Next, this is the math world link. I hope this opens in a new window. Yes, it does. So if you click in there, it will give you access to the math world canvas page. And then if you go down here, you can see all the tutors and all the classes that they, they teach or that they tutor. So you're looking for 2412. So Peter can help you, this person, Yvette can help you. Um, I've ne Oh, Donna, I was like, Delir, I've never met a Delir, but <laughs> that was the last name. Um, so some of the people don't do pre-cal though. So notice how these ones in white so far don't do pre-cal, neither does this one here in gray. So make sure that when you are trying to get tutoring, that you're getting tutoring from someone that does tutor 2412 pre-cal, okay? And they have their times of availability. I think it goes Monday through Saturday. They have their times availability. And then if you click here, you should be able to get to their Zoom link where they actually meet with you um, during that time. So like for Deborah, not Deborah, uh, let's say Roseanne. If I go click on her link right now, nothing's going to happen. Roseanne's not there, okay? Roseanne's not going to be there until 4.30 p.m., okay? But you would click on this link, and it would take you to the Zoom where you would be able to see Roseanne, and she'd be able to help you with your, your class, okay? Dun, dun, dun. 
I think that is, is that the end of my module? Cause there's no, oh no, it's cause I'm exited out to a whole nother class. Let me go back to my class and then hit next. Then this is trying to walk you through that thing. This is the page that I'm gonna edit a little bit later because there are some steps missing in here. You're supposed to sign in with your existing account or you're supposed to create an account. I promise you 95% of you are gonna have to create a new account. You probably don't have Cengage unlimited access, okay? So there's steps between three and four that are missing here. And I'm gonna type those in there in just a little bit. So if you've managed to go through all of this without those missing steps, kudos to you, you figured it out, thank you. Um, but if you haven't gotten there yet, or if you don't know what to do exactly, I am going to edit this page so that it's a little bit more clear, okay? I wish I had screenshots, but I don't, um, but we will manage. So you would click here and do the whole bit, right? Try to create an account and go for it through there, okay? I'm not gonna do that. I can't create an account. Um, it won't let me. Now, this is the web assigned settings page. So once we, figure out what's going on with Cengage and we get the situation fixed. Eventually our web assign assignment links should work. And so I should be able, excuse me, to click on that getting started in web assign assignment because that's the first one. It just basically shows you how to type in fractions, how to type in exponents, how to type in all kinds of things. Um, but it's basically like a tutorial kind of thing. Um, it doesn't take that long. It takes like 10 minutes, 15 minutes to do. So it's not that complicated. But once those links work for us, you need to understand the default settings on them. Okay. And so they are open up until um, a deadline. And the deadlines are all inside that class schedule. You can see the class schedule on my homepage, or you can see the class schedule inside the orientation module or you can see the class schedule in the syllabus. It's all over the place, okay? And I'll keep you updated when we meet each time we meet on where we are in that, in that um, timeline as well, okay? But inside the assignments, every single assignment has what's called 10 submissions or 10 attempts, okay? And you can choose one of two ways to do it. You can choose to do like, let's say the assignment has 10 problems. You can choose to do all 10 problems and then hit submit assignment at the bottom and it will grade everything. And then you can go back and change whichever one's got marked wrong and then hit submit again. That's your second attempt. And you can keep repeating that process up to 10 times. That's one way of doing it to keep track of how many attempts you've used. The other way is to do it per problem. So if I'm working on number one, I can submit my answer and I can submit the answer. And then if it's right, I can move to number two. If it's wrong, I can change it and submit it again and just keep submitting it up to 10 times until I get it right. If you submitted it 10 times and it's still wrong, one, you should have already messaged me by then. Stop <laughs> frustrating yourself. Um, you should have messaged me and said, hey, miss, I don't understand this problem. Please help me. Um, or you should have brought it up in class after like the fourth or fifth attempt. Um, but if you get to that 10th attempt and you still haven't figured it out or you still haven't gotten the problem correct, you can ask for an attempt extension request, okay? At the top of every assignment, there is a big button that says extension request, okay? However, that same button is used for two different types of extension requests. So one extension, one extension type is the attempt extension. And that basically means like, I ran out of 10 attempts, give me more attempts so I can get this problem right, okay? Then there's what's called the deadline extension request. And that is, has nothing to do with how many times you entered the answer. All it is is, here comes a deadline, I still don't have this assignment done, I need another day or another two days to get this assignment done, okay? That would be a deadline extension. Now, the attempt extensions, I will give you them whenever, however you ask for them, okay? There is no limit 
you could ask for more extension, more attempts on every single assignment all semester long, and it's not going to count against you. Okay. However, with deadlines, it's super important in classes to not fall behind. When you start falling behind, things start piling up real heavy, and it's hard to bounce back from that. Okay. And so to prevent that from happening too much to anyone, I usually only do three extensions. Now for us, that's a week and a half worth of work, right? Three sections, it's gonna take me three class periods, which is a week and a half to cover three sections. So that should be enough time for you to figure out whatever's going on. If there's like a emergency or some kind of situation, you do have the, those extension requests. Um, there are certain circumstances that can happen that will put you in a scenario that goes beyond this limitation. I mean, if you're hospitalized, if you're deployed, I mean, all kinds of things can happen. And in that case, I'm not going to be like, well, you only got three chances and that's it. You know, you ran out. It's not going to happen that way. Okay. That's a whole nother situation and we'll talk about it. But these deadline extension requests, these are different. These, um, you know, I've had people, it says here should be reserved for emergencies only, but I'll be honest with you. I've had people say, I've had a busy week at work and I just could not get to this one assignment this week. Can you extend it? Fine, that's fine. That'll be one of your three, but that's fine. That's different from, miss, my child has COVID and they're in the hospital and I'm freaking out and I don't know what to do. And you know, that whole bit totally different situation, okay? So just keep me informed with what's going on and we'll figure out how to maneuver around that, okay? That's why we have that remind texting, okay? So we can keep communication with all of that stuff that's happening because all kinds of things are happening. <laughs> um, if you get to this page, it says, congratulations, you finished your orientation, you're done, okay? Um, if you get to this page, you see this page, you will not be quote unquote smart drops, but I'm not going to be smart dropping anybody. But this is where you want to be to know that you have your orientation done. Okay. You will not be able to see Thursday's lecture if this is not done. Okay. Um, you'll be able to attend Thursday's lecture, but you won't be able to see the recording of it and you won't be able to click on the assignment for the homework until this is done. The orientation is done. Okay. So the orientation, it really was two things for me to see if you can follow directions um, and to see if you can kind of get an idea of how the class is going to work and what my expectations are, okay? If you ever have questions at any point in time, you can always ask them. You know, we went through this whole video. If later tonight you come up with a question, you can text it to me. If you already signed up for Remind, or you can email it to me. Um, or you can ask me in the next class period, okay? Um, but don't be afraid to ask questions. I do need you to follow directions. It's like the biggest thing. Most of the time, it's not because you're going to have a problem with computing or doing the math of something. Most of the times, it's because you didn't read the little blue print that said they wanted the answer as a decimal and not a fraction, okay? Um, and I'll have people that have, are wasting hours of their lives trying to figure out why they get this problem wrong. And I'm like, hey, wait a minute, you had it right at the very beginning. You just entered a fraction when the directions said they wanted the decimal, okay? So make sure you look out for all those little details whenever you're doing your homeworks, okay? And especially when you're doing the tests too, because I will probably, especially because the tests are on the computer, if there's a box for you to type in your answer, you need to type that answer in the correct way or it will count you wrong, okay? So, and of course, on the back end, I'll go back and give you credit, but following the directions is also part of your credit. If I said type in a fraction and you typed in a decimal, you're not gonna get all the credit for that problem because you didn't follow the directions, okay? So, but you'll get most of it, a lot of it, um, but just keep that in mind that directions are your friends. <laughs> Make sure you follow them, okay? Um, let's see what else, da, 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 da. you can read through all that when you have time. Here we go. I am pretty good. I pride myself on being pretty good about responding to students. Um, I try to respond within 12 hours because the longest period of time that I will go without responding is going to be when I sleep. And 
I do not sleep more than 12 hours. I don't even sleep a whole eight hours. So the chances are you're going to get a reply within 12 hours for sure, okay? Um, I can't guarantee because you never know what's gonna happen, right? And if it's a Sunday and my phone died while I was at Fiesta, Texas, I mean, what can you do, right? <laughs> so um, I try my hardest though to get back to everyone within 24 hours. If I do not respond to you within a day, that is abnormal. What could have happened is one, I have a little booger over here, four-year-old, uses my devices sometimes without my permission. Um, and if I get a notification, he swipes that notification away, okay? And then if I don't see it and I don't go hunt for it, I might not notice it, okay? So if that happens, I might not see your email. I'm pretty good at going and checking everything anyway, because I know that that happens. Um, but you never know, it could happen. The major thing that happens that prevents me from getting your messages is you guys not using your ACES email. If you email me in ACES using your personal email, I will not get that email. It will go to a quarantine folder and I will never see it, okay? And that's gonna be the biggest one. So, but if you're texting me, I will see those messages. Even if my son swipes away the notification that comes up, I can still go into the app and still see all the unread messages, okay? So I strongly encourage you to use that texting app once it gets all set up. Now, whether you use the actual app or whether you just respond to my text message in your text message, um, I guess that's an app too, right? Um, you don't have to use the Remind app. You could just use your messaging app to message me, okay? But whichever way you're using that texting, I strongly suggest that's the way that you communicate with me, okay? Unless it's a super long, long message, then email is probably your best thing, okay? But if it's a quick, like, hey, I'm going to miss class, that you can text me, okay? So we are required by the president to share a little bit of our story with you. And I have so many stories, but I'm not going to go into all of them. Um, but I did grow up in poverty with a single parent. My mom was that single parent. Um, and so having to kind of basically raise my little brothers, I knew that I wanted to go to school and I knew that I needed to like make some money. Um, <laughs> so I knew I needed to go to college. And the only way I was gonna do that, my mom made, I think like 11 or $12,000 a year back then. So there was no way my mom was gonna be able to pay for it. Um, so I had to get financial aid. I did get financial aid to go to school. I did also get student loans. Um, and I do have student loan debt. We did not have access to all the different bits of information that you guys now have access to. There was no class, no internet page that I got to read that talked to me about <laughs> um, student loan debt or how that was gonna affect me afterward. It was just, hey, you want money? Apply for this, and I did. And because of that, I put myself into a lot of um, student loan debt and I'm still paying that debt. So if you can avoid getting student loans, by all means, I strongly encourage you to stay away from student loans if you can. Um, you will be paying for them for quite a while. Now, depending on how well your education pays off, meaning like how well of a job you get and how well you get paid in that job, um, you may be able to pay off with student loans, you know, no problem. It just depends. I'm a teacher, we don't make the greatest amount of money. <laughs> so for me, I have to pay off my student loans a lot slower, okay? Um, so that's why I'm still in the boat that I am. But I didn't know any of this stuff. I was a first-generation student. Some of you guys might be first-generation student. That basically means no one before me in my family ever went to college, ever. Um, we were lucky if everybody graduated from high school before I existed, um, and so, I was the first one ever to go. So of course, I'm the one that was like the guinea pig and had to learn everything along the way. Um, and I have been in academia for forever now, since I was 18. I don't care about age. They always say, don't ask a lady about her age. I, pff, none of that stuff matters to me. I'm 39. So for 21 years, I have been in college, period, <laughs> right? I was going to school from 2000 to 2008. 
And then I have been teaching or tutoring on the campus colleges since 2002. So I have been in this college environment for all these years. I have lots and lots and lots of tips and advice and knowledge when it comes to college, okay? Um, so if you ever have questions that you wanna ask me, ask me, okay? Um, I have lots and lots and lots of information to share. Because I did have to go through all of it on my own, I did learn a lot along the way, okay? And then as I've taught semester after semester, you know, I've racked up my resources on where to get information. So it happens just naturally, just by being in this business, right, of education, that you learn more and more about how it works and how it functions, okay? So I did actually attend one of the Alamo colleges. Um, I did get my associate's degree at Palo Alto College, which is on the South side. I don't know if any of you guys are PAC students in here, um, but I did attend one of the Alamo colleges myself. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, what else? I did go to UTSA um, for my bachelor's degree and for my master's degree. And all of my degrees are in math. And I'll be honest with you, I majored in math because I'm lazy. Math was super, super easy for me. And I just wanted something that was easy because I did not know what I was in for. Um, and so that's why I chose math. But I mean, it's worked out for me and I take pride in knowing that I'm helping other people on their educational journeys and that I'm helping them reach their goals in their future. Um, so I love my job and I do everything that I can to help you guys to get to that point where you can succeed, okay? Um, I have gone through almost everything. So that's why I'm kind of like, don't like people turning in things late because I have been through like the ringer when it comes to things happening to me. I have been ill. I have been in the hospital. I have given birth during the middle of semester. I have worked 60 hours per week as a single parent and still going to school full time. And I never, 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 never missed an assignment. And I never turned in an assignment late. That doesn't mean I was never absent. Um, case in point, I had a baby on Monday, missed my Tuesday class, showed up on Thursday and gave my presentation. Um, that's just how I have always been. I've always been super busy and still been able to manage everything. And even though things happen, I still try to make my best effort to like not let it affect anything else, okay? Um, and in the process of all these years, I did have some babies. <laughs> so there they are. I have a 14 year old. She got mad at me because she goes to high school here now. Um, she got mad because she saw this photo and apparently this photo is like two years old. She looks like almost a woman now. I'm like, oh my God. But <laughs> she was kind of mad because I had that photo still up there. Um, and then my seven year old and then my little man Odin there. They all are named after gods and goddesses. That's just my thing. Um, so here we are at the end, you can read all of this. Just understand that regardless, even though I say I don't like things to be turned in late and I want you to follow directions and I want you to read everything thoroughly, I'm still super friendly and I still wanna help whenever I can, okay? So don't be discouraged by my expectations or my rules or my guidelines or anything like that. They sound scarier than they are, but they all have a purpose and a meaning behind why they're there. I don't just make up rules for no reason. Okay, um, so I do personally have test anxiety and anxiety period. Um, I don't know if you guys noticed, but like my voice or my, at least my lip trembles a little bit sometimes when I get nervous um, and my hands will start to shake, but I get super nervous when I'm in front of different people, okay? Um, but that is my anxiety. And so I have total compassion and understanding <laughs> and sympathy for those that are in that same boat as me. I have lots and lots and lots of um, tips and tools that I use to get through my test anxiety because even though I'm awesome at math, I swear to you at the beginning, I would get 50s on my tests because I just had anxiety. Um, but I've learned how to, to manage through that. And there are some things that I used I can tell you about them. You can try them. They may work for you. They may not. It just depends on you, okay? Um, but when we get close to the, the test, I will share a couple of those little tips, okay? Um, but that's it. That's the end of the orientation. It looks like a lot. It's not a lot. The things you're going to waste the most time on is getting that lockdown browser um, up and running so that you can do the readiness quiz. 
and then uploading the paperwork. These two things right here are gonna take the most amount of time. And if you're great at the computer, they won't take that long. I've had people go through this entire thing in an hour. I've had some people take three hours, okay? It just depends on you. In the future, excuse me, in the future, we will be primarily working with this unit one and I need to unpublish these because I don't want anybody taking these things too soon. Um, but I will put all of the recordings in a page here, okay? And then as we start talking about the different sections, I will also put those assignment links in here too. So when we start talking about 9.4, I'll put up the homework assignment for 9.4. I'm just gonna keep importing things as we keep going, okay? Um, this is not an online class, so you should be staying on, ta on target with me and the class schedule and not moving ahead, okay? Um, so those will come up as we go. But other than that, I know you guys have been chiming in and asking questions. If you have any last minute questions, now's your time to ask before I stop recording and I help Jonathan with his um, solutions issue. Um, how, do you, how do you see if there's uh, recordings? Or like, how do you know where the recordings are? Um, they will be right here at the okay. bottom where it says unit one. I will put all the recordings for unit one in here. It, I'll add a page. I mean, I can add it right now. Um, it's just gonna say class recordings for unit one. And then as we get to unit two, I'll create another one for that module down here. Does that make sense? Yeah, thank you. Okay, sure. Um, yeah, and that's the way it'll work. Um, any other questions? Okay, I'm gonna stop recording and you guys are free to go. Um, I hope.